南無妙法蓮華経、南無妙法蓮華経、南無妙法蓮華経。Hello, friends. I hope this finds you in good health and secure. My fellow scholars and students, thank you for being here. Thank you for your practice.、Um, the volume two of Buddhism Reference is really shaping out and spreading its wings. And I'm going to start over. I started already on the playlist、uh, with, I think the first term I did was Arhat. But now we've added several terms、uh, that come alphabetically ahead of Arhat. So I'm going to start back at the beginning. And today's term is, or this video's term, this podcast term, is Abhidharma.、Uh, we run into this term quite a lot in uh, uh, all sectors of Buddhism. Uh, but as relates to us and our modern practice, once again, this is my goal with these reference manuals is to relate、uh, these ancient words、um, with their meaning useful to our modern day practice. Although it's helpful to know what their history is so we can see how they developed in the continuity. And I will say this is that this is a pre. Uh, final release. So there may be a lot of verbiage in here that、uh, I'll find is repetitive or that I won't need and I will remove. But at least now I can cover the subject. You can have some knowledge about it. And、uh, if anything, I will try to reduce it because some of this is、uh, quite large. But Abhidharma, to be fair, is a very large idea and uh, uh, conceptual framework. So on and so forth, you'll see as I read it. So here we go. This is a very large compendium of formalized teachings written after the extinction of Shakyamuni Buddha to represent scholarship in the practice of Buddhism. So I could stop there, but it doesn't really, it's not really helpful, is it? So, <laughs> a large subject for study. It must be recognized that several schools claiming Abhidharma texts. Vary greatly in their interpretations and implementation. Now, why would that be? Well, because he taught, Shakyamuni taught in different periods more and more to the elevated capacities of those students he was training. So, the same words, same ideas, but the interpretations, the application. Evolves over time as people are more capable of understanding, right? That's the reason for this endeavor to begin with. So let's go through it until we get to the modern interpretation, and then you can understand the background as well as how it applies to our practice today. All right? From Wikipedia, one of many sources, and if the sources don't look reputable or good, I don't use them. So, I try to use what's representative of the scholarship, modern scholarship, academics, of what is accepted、um, scholarship or information. Yeah? So, in modern school,、uh, scholars generally believe that the canonical Abhidharma texts emerged after the time of the Buddha in around the 3rd century BCE. So, about.、Um, Sorry,、um, maybe 200 or years or so after the extinction of Shakyamuni Buddha.、Yeah? Therefore, the canonical Abhidharma works are generally claimed by scholars not to represent the words of the Buddha himself, but those of later Buddhists. Peter Skilling describes the, this is another scholar, Peter Skilling describes.、Uh, Uh, the Abhidharma literature as, quote, the end product of several centuries of intellectual endeavor. So, the scholarship following、uh, the extinction of Shakyamuni Buddha transmitted orally, right, via、uh, disciples, monks, students of. And you, you got to believe if they, if they constantly were trained orally to uh, uh, memorize the words. Especially the gathas, that there's going to be some fidelity. But still, these are people who continuously, as you and I, are expanding our capacity, understanding 
the teachings of Shakyamuni Buddha. So the Abhidharma represents a several hundred years focus and study on the words of Shakyamuni Buddha, albeit transmitted orally, right? So the various Vinaya accounts of the uh, compilation of the Buddhist canon after the death of the Buddha offer various sometimes conflicting narratives regarding the canonical status of the Abhidharma. That's unfortunate, but you could see how it could happen, right? Because as soon as different scholars get a hold of this framework, they've got their own opinion to add to it. And this, this is the constant struggle of all the scholarship of Buddhism. I've talked a bit about it ad nauseum. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it here, just to point it out, okay? While the Mahasangika Vinaya does not speak of an Abhidharma apart from the Sutra Pitaka, and the Vinaya Pitaka, the uh, Mahasaksaka, Theravada, Dharmaguptaka, and Sarvastivada Vinayas all provide different accounts which mention that there was some kind of Abhidharma to be learned aside from the sutras and the Vinaya. According to Analayo, the Mulasravastivada Vinaya does not expi explicitly mention the Abhidharma, although it reports that on this occasion, Mahakashyapa recited the Matrakas, or the Matrakas, Matrakas, man, that's hard. Analeo thinks that this reflects an early stage when what later became the Abhidharma was called the Matrakas. The term appears in some sutras, such as the Mahagolpalaka Sutra and its parallel, which says that a learned monk is one who knows the Dharma, Vinaya, and the Matrakas. Other Abhidharma traditions, the uh, Shariputra Abhidharma Sastra is a complete Abhidharma text that is thought to come from Dharmaguptaka sect. The only complete edition of this text is in Chinese. Sanskrit fragments from this text have been found in Bamiyan, Afghanistan, and are now part of the Shoyan collection. The manuscripts at this find are thought to have been part of a monastery library of the Mahasamgika Lokotaravada sect. Many, many sects, yes? And they all not only lay claim to, but had scraps to validate, uh, you know, the, things written on paper only last so long. Different kinds of paper, different kinds of ink. And as we've discussed with the, the Gandharava uh, region, and you can uh, check out this book, uh, Gandhara, it was just in recent history, a huge find of treasure troves of uh, buried in clay pots, these translations, these scholarly or, or uh, erudite translations of writings based on oral teachings and other writings. So it's, it's very hard because this was an oral tradition to for so long, hundreds of years, it's, it's difficult to find, ironically, because there's such a thread in Buddhism of uh, the worry of loss of the teachings, yeah, to find a recorded authoritative canon. And this is why you hear the word canonical and canon. Tendai is credited with a tremendous scholarship in this regard in China. Uh, but, you know, Kumarajiva was doing his part. So throughout the history of Buddhism, there are scholars who recognize that there needs to be a clear compendium of Shakyamuni's teachings. But that doesn't prohibit every leader of a sect to incorporate what they want and maybe leave out what they don't want. And Nietzsche talks about this all the time, right? So let's go on. Several Pudgalavada Abhidharma type texts also survive in China, such as the Tridharma Kasastra and the Samatiyani Kaya Sastra. 
Uh, these texts contain traditional Abhidharma type lists and doctrines, but they also attempt to expound the, and defend the unique Pudga Laivada uh, doctrine of the person, the Pudgala. Many Abhidharma texts have been lost, likely more than have survived. This includes texts brought from India by Shrakjan, Shrakzan, Shwagzhang, hard to know how to pronounce that, belonging to a variety of Indian schools that were never translated into Chinese. Many Abhidharma Sastras discovered among the Gandharan, there we go with Gandhara, Buddhist texts have no parallel in existing Indic languages or Chinese or Tibetan translation, suggesting the former breadth of Abhidharma literature. So under the rubric of Abhidharma, are many, many uh, claims to the rules, the precepts. The, all, all of that comes from uh, not only, but uh, is explored in the Abhidharma, right? According to some sources, Abhidharma was not accepted as canonical by the uh, Mahasamgika school, the Theravadan uh, Dipavamsa, for example, records that the Mahasgimka had no Abhidharma. However, other sources indicate that there were such collections of uh, Abhidharma. During the early 5th century, uh, the Chinese pilgrim Faxian is said to have found a uh, Mahasamgika Abhidharma at a monastery in Pataliputra. When Shaksan visited Danyat Kataka, he wrote that the monks of this region were Mahasamgikas and mentions the Purvasailas specifically. Near uh, Danyakataka, he met two Mahasamgika <laughs> bhikshus and studied Mahasamgika Abhidharma with them for several months. So they obviously had some um, of the Abhidharma texts, some form of them, yeah, during which time they also studied various Mahayana Sastras together under Shaksan's direction on the basis of textual evidence as well as inscriptions at Nagarjun Konda. Joseph Walser concludes that at least some Mahasamgika sects probably had an Abhidharma collection and that it likely contained five or six books. All right, enough on that. Mahayana Abhidharma, which is uh, much more, my apologies, sometimes these robes fold in odd ways. All right, so for Mahayana uh, uh, references to Abhidharma, another complete system of Abhidharma thought is elaborated in certain works of the Mahayana Yogacara school tradition which mainly evolved out of the Stravastivada Abhidharma, right? This Yogacara Abhidharma can be found in the works of figures like Asanga, Vasubandhu, who we know, uh, Shtiramati, Dharmapala, Silabhadra, Shakshan, or Shuanchang, okay, pronunciation, and Vinitavada. This is uh, around the time period around Nagarjuna, and, uh, you know, Vasubandhu, obviously, but Yogacara Abhidhamma, uh, Abhidhamikas, Abhidharmikas discussed many concepts not widely found in non-Mahayana Abhidharma, such as the theory of the eight consciousnesses. See first volume Buddhism reference, right? Because we talk about it in the first volume. Uh, actually, there's a ninth consciousness which isn't part of this Abhidharma yet. So this is early Mahayana, right? Now, obviously, if Abhidharma, this is an aside from here, Abhidharma obviously constitutes lots of um, rules, precepts, behavior rules, right? There was a lot of that in early Buddhism. And so if you were to, to be a dedicated monk, there were certain things, formalities, uh, research subjects, and things that every one of you had to conquer much like any school, right? There are 
study um, parameters and tests on the, the knowledge of those parameters. So Abhidharma is, is I don't want to say that's all it is, but it's certainly it, these rules, these ideas, these conceptual learnings are part of an Abhidharma, right? So it would make sense that later evolution to the Mahayana thinking and scholarship would either edit or add on to the Abhidharma from a Mahayanist capacity, new terms, different interpretations, so on and so forth. So you see how this becomes more of a, a living document framework, right? All with the same mesh, mission to build a strong framework for the understanding of Shakyamuni Buddha's teachings. So that puts it in a better, I think, uh, understanding of what an Abhidharma is, right? Now, uh, let's continue. Which includes the novel Alaya Vijnana, which is right the eighth consciousness. B before then, that wasn't discussed. The capacity to understand what that might be just wasn't explored yet until Mahayana. Yeah. So the three natures, three svabhava, were cognizance, the fundamental revolution of the basis and the Mahayana Buddhology of the three bodies of Buddha, the ten paramita and the ten bhumi. So these are new explorations documented in the Abhidhamma. Huh? Uh, from the online encyclopedia of Buddhism, Abhidharma refers to a set of texts developed by early Buddhist schools and the system of thought that is presented in those texts. The Abhidharma texts define many of the topics mentioned in the Buddha's teachings or sutras and arrange them into classifications such as the five skandhas, right, Vasubandhu, the twelve ayatanas, right, the, the uh, steps of the nidana, the eighteen datus, and so on, thereby providing tools for generating a precise understanding of all experience. Well, there you have it in much more concise form uh, than my ramblings. And we're almost done now. Contemporary scholar Stephen D. Goodman describes the Abhidharma as, so on and so forth, an in-depth study both analytically and experientially, because Buddhism is about the mind and experience, of what makes up the entire universe, the person and their world, right? The Abhidharma speaks about different patternings of what make up this entire universe for the sole purpose of helping beings along the path to the cessation of suffering. The cessation of formation, but that eventually ends up being suffering in samsara, right? We could go on and on and on about this. But you see that the, the scholastic endeavor as Buddhism and its scholarship, its understanding grows over centuries and centuries, long after Shakyamuni has gone extinct. Yeah? The Abhidharma texts are categorized as the third of the three pitakas, or collections, into which the Buddhist teachings are traditionally divided. The Abhidharma pitaka is associated with the training in wisdom, or prajna. So now, Words like pitakas or prajna, you can look those up uh, in this resource as well. Uh, next term up will be the Agama Sutras, which are the teachings that evolved around the time of the original Abhidharma, kind of hand in hand, and we'll get into that in the next video. Thanks for listening. I hope that was helpful, at least helps you on your way to understanding uh, what these terms, why they keep popping up, uh, usually in our modern practice, I will say this, when you see the term Abhidharma, it's really ref referring to uh, historic study of Buddhism. Because in our day, in our modern practice, in Nietzsche's practice, the Abhidharma is just, it's no longer relevant. It was essential to get to 
the teaching of the Lotus Sutra, but it's no longer something to focus on, to dive into. If you're curious, of course, do so, but don't get distracted by it. Uh, it's an earlier teaching, much as learning the alphabet and learning how to spell words isn't necessary for you to today write a letter or an email or a book for that matter, right? Um, to go back to learning the alphabet would seem a little bit I don't want to minimize the Abhidharma to nothing. I'm just saying it's a historic evolution of our Buddhist thought, which today is simply accomplished by Namo Myoho Rengekyo. Right? So, enjoy your practice. Savor it. Stay strong. Take care of your health. And I'll see you in the next one. Right? All right. Bye for now. Bye.